This is Mel Rights Actors Podcast, episode 119. We focus on relationships, sports, and pop culture from a man's point of view. First of all, we want to thank our listeners, our new ones, our OGs. Thank you, thank you, thank you for hanging with the fellas. What up? On today's show, we have a new president. More importantly, very soon we're going to have a new former president. And I, Evander Holyfield wants a piece of Mike Tyson. Damn, you child support payment is supposed to be a motherfucker. <laughs> you ain't lying. And Nicole Young wants to know if Dr. Dre fathered any babies outside the marriage, speaking of child support. And we got a Dear Irby letter from a guy who's fallen in love with a woman who's below his standards. What should he do? Find out all that and more right now. This is Amory Podcast with Kyle and Kamal, where men come to talk and women come to eavesdrop. I am Kyle. I am Kamal. And we're saving relationships one listener at a time. Kamal, we stayed up. We stayed up all night. You stayed up at three in the morning, as I said, for nothing. Hmm. But finally, as one of my kids used to say, finally, we have a new president. President Joseph R. Biden. How you feel about that, dog? Hmm. I've been waiting for this for four years, man. Dang, it's crazy, huh? Four years, and uh, honestly, everything is going like the way it's supposed to go. What you, you mean? What, you know, they won. Yeah. And Trump is like, like you know, disputing it. Of course. And he's like, no, it's not over, and he thinks he won and all of that. Yeah, and all yeah, his yeah. supporters are like, you know, trying to protest. And I mean, this is exactly the way... It was supposed to go. I'm so happy. I, I mean, honestly, it was like I really didn't want to see Trump up there uh, Saturday night saying, "Hey, man, we ran a you know, we ran a, a hard fought race, but the American people have chosen somebody else." And yeah, I yeah, welcome yeah. Joe Biden. And I'm gonna work with him and have my team work with him <laughs> to make sure it's a smooth transition. Yeah. No, I you didn't wanted want, the kicking and screaming. I did. Yes, I wanted <laughs> the kicking and screaming. If I go on the safari. Yes. I wanted to see an, a lion attack something, right? So you want to see somebody get ate. I want to see what's ate. supposed to happen. I want to see the laws of nature. And mm-hmm. Trump's nature is to be an asshole. So I wanted yes. nature to take its course. And, yes. you know, hey, man, it's happening. Yes, it's happening. And it's not exactly going to be over. Yes, I, ho- I, and I hope that, man, he stays until... Uh, inauguration day <laughs> and is escorted out. I mean, I, I just funny. I want this man to be who he is now. Not yes. when he. Well, here's the thing about it. Is here's the, the bad news. Caveat. Yeah, he's still the president until January twentieth. Yes, he is. And so he can do a lot of you know bitchy get back at you shit from yeah, now yeah, until yeah. then. And that's the only thing I worry about. It's like yeah, it's he, like a divorce is happening. The divorce is going to happen. You know when it's final. It's final on this day. But your your spouse is a bitch or an asshole. So you you, you never know what's going to crack until the day that it's final. Yeah, it's like they serve you eviction notice. You know you leaving, and you start just fucking up the house. You know yeah, saying? that's hella petty though, dog. Okay, yeah, that's well, who Trump we're dealing is, with. Yeah, petty Peter man. So. <laughs> Saturday Night Live, they stepped to the, the Trump thing, and Dave Chappelle was the host. I'm just going to say, man, I really enjoyed what Dave Chappelle did. It felt like he picked up where his special left off, the, the outdoor special. And you could tell he was rusty in the outdoor special because he hadn't been getting up. But according to this new set, he's been doing sets outside. You could see the growth. You could see that he's been getting up, man. How did you like Chappelle's opening monologue on SNL? I don't think it was as well received as um as you and I probably, you know, enjoyed it. Yes. You know, I don't think that audience there appreciated the Better than uh, Bill Burr. They they gave Bill Burr a little more blues. Well, I think Bill Burr probably in person had more laughs. I think it was mm. the the you know, the the blue check Twitter people who mm-hmm. who went against Bill Burr. But I think inside the studio think he did all, did all right i don't mm. think dave Chappelle did all right in the studio really no, i don't think he did as, as you know because he actually had to reach out to lauren say, hey lauren i mean sorry i thought this was supposed to be a comedy show like mm. because i think that uh you know i, I don't know 
for whatever for whatever uh reason it didn't connect as well. And then they gave him some he's Dave Chappelle, so let's laugh. But yeah, 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 yeah. when he, you know, went against white men and stuff like that, I don't think they thought that was funny. <laughs> mm. You know, I didn't notice that, man. I loved it. I, th- I thought it was well received. I love Bill Burns. I thought that was well received, but I did notice uh, Bill had to walk a couple off. Like, okay, this ain't my audience, but I'm still, I'm still yeah. a pro. I saw, you know, Dave do that once. You know, every comedian they get their old, hey man, throw the little, little throw the little excuse in there. Hey man, these are the jokes, whatever it is. How you walk it off? But I, yeah, I, I didn't think that, man. As far as the episode, did you like that episode? Did you like some of the sketches? I know I enjoyed. I really liked that sketch with the guy. First of all, I like the Aunt Jemima joint that that was funny, mm-hmm. and I liked the one with the guy. Uh, was breaking up with the girl, or he wanted he, he wanted his girl back. <laughs> that shit was funny. Dog, that's one of the funniest one I've seen in a yeah. long time. <laughs> this this season's not good. You know, yeah. It's, is it it's, the writers? What's going on, man? I mean, honestly, man, they had they you know they had to turn over some cast members, which I don't think mattered. But I mm-hmm. think that you know they lost some writers, and mm-hmm. um, you know it's just it's a different environment. Maybe they aren't allowed to just go out. In, in in the public like they normally would to just get inspiration and stuff like that and so mm. I don't know what the reason is but a lot of the sketches I, I'll say this too a lot of the mm. political sketches the code openings have really just dragged the show down they're they're too mm. long and yeah, they yeah, don't yeah. have enough pop to them and I think mm-hmm. it just starts off on the wrong foot the political sketches mm. I like Jim Carrey as Biden man but I've been seeing a lot of haters man how do you feel about Jim Carrey as Biden. Uh, he's okay. He's okay. He's, he's not as good as the last guy. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. Jason Sudeikis played him differently. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I think this guy's playing him like the old man Biden right now. Did you now. just call Jim him Car- this guy? Did you <laughs> just Car- call the? <laughs> did you just call the honorable Jim Carrey <laughs> from Dumb and Dumber? <laughs> me, myself, and Irene in living color. <laughs> this guy. This guy. This guy, Jim. <laughs> This fucking this, guy this, right this, this here. Carry guy. This Carrie guy. This Canadian James. Dude. This fucking Canuck. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the, he plays him like he's doing an impression. Mm-hmm. You know, and yeah. uh, I think the other guy, uh, Jason Sudeikis, mm-hmm. was more just, you know, he was playing a caricature. Yes. You know, yes, he yes. was doing a caricature of Biden, like one of the ones uh-huh. who was like loud talking somebody. And from yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And from that moment on, that's who Biden, Biden was. became. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the, what the audience liked. He's like, fuck it, this is Biden. Yeah, the now, guy who's laughing and stuff like that, saying yeah, yeah, all the yeah. wrong shit, not giving a fuck. And yeah. I think Jim Carrey's like, I'm playing him now, this old man who's trying to be, you know, a statesman and stuff like that, instead yes. of having fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I want to talk about Stacey Abrams, man, because Stacey Abrams was not picked to be vice president, but she still came through for Joe Biden, which to me, that's what you want, bro. I'm talking about in a relationship. You know what I'm saying? You know how sometimes if you pick the other girl, you don't hear from the last girl. Talk to that bitch about that. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I was wondering if I could talk to that bitch. But she didn't do that when it came to getting Kamala Harris and Joe Biden elected Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. She helped register 800,000 voters in the state of Georgia. Props to Stacey Abrams for stepping up, man. How you feel about Stacey Abrams' clutch shot getting Georgia for Biden? Oh, man, it was it was it was amazing. And I don't think she, I don't think she had a reason to be scorned. Mm. You know, um Stacey Abrams lost her last election. Yes. And so... For to be the governor of Georgia. To be the governor of Georgia. I mean, yes. honestly, I, 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 mean, I don't think she got a fair shot. She was running against the, the, the then Secretary of State. So he was the guy counting the ballots. That's like playing mm. against the refs. You mm. know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> you playing against the league. Yes. You know, you're probably going to lose that one. But um, no, she lost her, her last race. And so, now if she won, yeah, but she lost. And so why would he pick somebody who just I mean, lost? Kamala lost. She didn't lose her last race, but she lost her. She got, you know, she eliminated herself from the presidential race. Well, How is it different? Well, because she stepped out. Mm, okay. She stepped out because she probably got it. You know, it was a deal. Hey, yeah, man, yeah, we're yeah. going we gonna to get, you know, let's all just get behind this one guy. Mm-hmm. And she was the first one to do it. I think that's why she got blessed with the position. She mm-hmm. was the first one out. 
Because mm. she, I, re- I remember she qualified for the next debate. Like you mm-hmm. had to have a certain amount of like uh, votes or, you know, yes. y- your uh, percentage, whatever. Yes. And she bounced. They tried to laugh at her and she never yeah. got any more. Dude, she was like, oh, she long was game. Like, you know what? Long Let game. me get out of this so hopefully he can forget the shit I was talking about him yeah. in the last debate. I honestly By think, the time it's time I, to I be think, picking. I think it was a deal. Mm-hmm. Deal. I'll get out now, but hey, homie. I don't think Stacey Abrams had a chance. I think those are all just, you know, he was kicking the tires. Stacey Abrams, uh, you know, Karen Bass, all these people. Yeah. Uh, Susan Kick his Rice. ass, Karen Bass. <laughs> I think that basically this was all just, you know, he was kicking the tires, man. But mm-hmm. he was, if there's one person you needed to get out of the race, it was Kamala because Kamala knows how to eviscerate. She went to Howard just like your wife. I'm sure wifey was excited, man. Can you speak on that real quick before we move on? Oh yeah, man. They. Um, I mean, you went to Howard as well, but yeah. I mean, you know. I mean, this is what we do, man. This is HU, man. This is what we do. We 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 spit out oh, greatness, my gosh. man. Oh, <laughs> my <laughs> gosh. Yeah, we yeah we churn them out, man. From like the White House to like the MRA, man. Okay, okay. Listen, <laughs> man, I, I'm glad we got one on the MRA, man. We come back. <laughs> we have some feedback, and after that, we have a post nut mo story from a woman who said a guy pretended to be interested just so he could hit it. What happened? Find out soon. It's the MRA Podcast. Hey, what's up, guys? I sure hope you're enjoying the show. If you like it, I invite you to go to our website, themrapodcast.com, and catch up on over 100 episodes that we have in store for you. If you ain't working, you might as well check us out. And if you want some more, go over to The World According to Cheryl and check me out on Cheryl Underwood's podcast. We post content there every single day. We have her normal radio show labeled SUR, and then the Cheryl Underwood podcast, where we get in her personal business every Friday. Then on the weekends, we have the specialty shows and range from late night cupcake to auntie shows house party to our gospel show spiritual nourishment you gotta check out the world according to Cheryl even though I ain't on it ah. we got some feedback Hobie do we now Yes, we do. My name is Walter, and I listen to you guys on Dynasty Radio in New York on Wednesday nights before I go to bed. Shouts out to Kim Dynasty and Dynasty Radio. They throw us on in the NYC. Um, I like to pour me a glass of tequila, smoke some weed, and laugh my ass off with you two brothers. That's what I'm talking about, Walter. Thank you for doing what you do. Kamala heard you say you had a fresh blue Yankee. You know what's up. Are you from here, Walter, in New York, New York? Kamal, are you mm, from New York? I am not. Mm. However. How the hell did that happen then? I'm a Yankees fan, man. Uh, growing Why? up. Well, because they had the the great Reggie Jackson hey, as I a was kid. You better say Reggie, man, because yeah, Reggie was the man. Yeah, as a kid, that's the only baseball player I, I think I knew was Reggie Jackson. Yeah, yeah, I knew, like, Mr. Dave October. Parker uh, for the yeah. Pittsburgh Pirates. And I liked the Pirates, too, because I like names. I wasn't watching at five watching baseball games. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I stuck with the Yankees. What about your dad, though, man? Wasn't your dad watching the Dodgers? My dad hates the Dodgers. Oh, man, I see where you get it from, man. My dad's a Boston Red Sox fan. Oh, I, I'm done with this conversation. Well, here's the thing about it. My dad, I mean, my, I'm like of my... all the cities, I'm like, I'm like my father, man. So he is not, like, emotionally attached to, like, a city, right? So for, he, he likes the Celtics, the Boston Celtics in oh basketball. Oh, my God. But do you know why? Because of the brother uh, with all the 11 rings? No, not just him. My father said when he was growing up, the Celtics had all the brothers. <laughs> they had the black dudes on the team. So oh, it's like, so you know, Jerry West and Gil Goodrich, whatever. You oh, know. That's funny. So he's that like, funny. the Celtics had the brothers. And then he says for the Red Sox, there was a center fielder, a black dude. He liked the way he wore his cap when he was a little boy. That's funny. And so it's like they become his favorite teams. I like the fact that he stuck with them like myself. I like the way Isaiah dribbled and played. I'm a Pistons fan. I like the uh, way I knew Reggie Jackson. I like, you know, John Elway, and I like Bobby Humphrey, the running back, the rookie people, running back. Man. And so it's like I like I like that. These teams just happen to be the rivals of the city where you live in. That's the funny part, Kamal. Your father liked the Baltimore and Celtics. They had all the brothers, but they but he grew up in LA, the rival city. He liked the Celtics. You, you like the 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 Detroit Pistons, the rival NBA Finals champ, you That's know, not a competition. Rival, but you know. Whoa, 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 whoa. In the when you were coming up, there were rivals. They went to the NBA Finals against mm. each other. That's when you saw Isaiah playing. 
Well, I saw him in the playoffs, in the Eastern Conference playoffs and stuff years before that. But once we got there, I mean, I don't know. I mean, you can call it a rivalry. I mean, we got y'all two to one, so. L.A. Raiders, rival, Denver Broncos. I'm just saying, man, it started with your father, man, and it bled into you. And hopefully uh, Skillet and uh, Tasmania. huh? Skillet's a Pistons fan. I'm done. Anyway, we come back, man. We have a post nut story from a woman who said a guy pretended to be interested just so he could hit it. What happened? Find out next. It's the MRA Podcast. According to Webster's Dictionary, being in post nut mode is when you have a clear mind and you can make sound decisions as if you just busted a nut. Yeah, I don't know if Webster actually said that. No, he didn't. But our listener Big Easy Q told us all about it and we can relate. Women, men. So listen, if you have a story when you did something foolish in prenup mode yeah something really dumb maybe it was top grime especially something in prenup mode you don't want nobody to know about hit us up and we'll tell the world we can all laugh at your expense and hopefully you'll learn from your mistakes aristotle once said the results of prenup mode is the best teacher i think he said some shit like that send us your stories at dear irby at the mra podcast.com that's dear irby at the mra podcast.com and now it's time for a post nut mode story only on the MRA podcast. Here we go. This one is from Shanika and Carson. By the way, I just want to say before we get to this post nut story, I, I'm glad that your son follows your team. One of my sons is a Raiders fan, and so that's always good, man. That that's that like father like son thing is a beautiful thing, son. I mean, uh, come on. Yeah, he's a bigger fan than I am. I, I, you know, he's like, Dad, we can be good next year. I'm like, ah, oh, son. He's we, still young. He's got hope. Yeah, he's hopeful. All right, this one's from, as I said, Shanika. She said, I have a post-nut story about this nut I was with. I met this fool on Plenty of Fish, and I told him I had three kids. He swore up and down that it wasn't going to be a problem, but I could tell he just wanted to hit it because he always took the conversation sexual. I kind of like this clown. (laughs) She kept going in on him. (laughs) So I gave him a chance to prove me wrong, but I told him I wasn't going to give him none until he passed my tests. Oh, ladies, here we go. Shanika, Shanika, I love you, baby, but here we go <laughs> with the bullshit. God damn it. With the fucking test. Here we go. First, I said no sex for three months, period. I said no kissing, no nothing. He needed to get to know me and my kids first. That meant taking me and my kids out on dates. Now, before y'all men start hating, because she already knows she must listen to the show. Oh, yeah, she's Just prof- know, yeah, she's I prophetic. never... Oh, come on. I never, <laughs> shit's coming. I never planned on making him wait three full months. Thank you, Shaniki, still playing games. It was just a test, like I said. So I told this fool we needed to go on three dinner dates and three breakfast dates. But after the second set of dates, I was enjoying him so much that I gave him some. I put it on him and they had this nigga squealing like a bitch talking about how good it was and how much he loved me and he wanted to build a family with me. Really? Then why this nigga ghost me as soon as I gave him some? Mm. (laughs) She said, my kids never got that third breakfast date. Shanika is killing me right now with this. See why we be making y'all wait? Because we never know if y'all serious or not. SMDH shaking my damn head. That's some Shanika and Carson. Come out. What did they say about Shanika and the test she gave old boy? Well, I think she failed her own test. (laughs) And she gave his dude a test, and she got the F. She was like, oh. listen, man, Shanika, you messed up yes. from the get-go. You yes. And so once you told him we're not having sex, you put all these stipulations on the relationship, then mm-hmm. his mind is like, well, I just got to get to that goal. That became his goal. <laughs> Goal-oriented yeah, people. He Ladies, had- listen, listen. He's trying to give you the game. Stop being mad and listen. Keep going, Man, dog. And so, and so he had his mind on his goal. All right, well, fuck it. Then. I'm going to do these three dates or whatever the fuck. So the dinner dates, the breakfast dates, and he gave him some. <laughs> then he was like, okay, goal over. Done. I'm done. Yeah. You know, uh, you shouldn't. I understand why you wanted to protect yourself, Shanika. I get it. You wanted to protect yourself because dude just want the cookie and bounce. I don't know if I would have brought the kids into it, making to meet your kids. I get it. You want to know that he's down with the kids, but I think you should vet this cat a little f- before you start bringing your kids into it. What'd you say, Kamal? Yeah, I mean, just just coming up with like these rules, these you know, what I'm saying preconditions. 
They have to think protect it, them, though, Kamal. I, they got to protect themselves. Well, I see. Here's the thing about it. I think it's a mistake. Now, you can have these in your head. But okay. once you voice uh, these, I think it kind of... I think it kind of just changes the dynamic of the relationship, you mm, know? It just cha- becomes I, transactional. Man, it changes everything. Like, you know, so this isn't going to be organic. Mm. You know, we're not going to just naturally just gel. No. What's going to happen is I have to, like, clear a bunch of hurdles. Mm-hmm. And, Arbitrary hurdles. Right. And so once I clear these hurdles, I'm a little, I'm a little offended you made me jump through all these hoops. Yeah, and, and no matter how good the coochie is, ladies, it's not that the coochie wasn't good. Because remember last week, the coochie wasn't good. And he was like, I had to wait all that time for this. Like, mm-hmm. homeboy, don't lean on me. This time, the coochie was amazing. I'm sure it was. But he still was frustrated at what you put him through. Right. He's like, I mean, that's where the animosity, you know. Yeah. And probably after these dates, he's driving home. It's fucking, God damn it, she getting on my goddamn nerves. <laughs> Like basically, it's not even it's not natural. When you say no kissing, yeah. you know. So if nature just took its course, you're saying no. It's it's a controlled mm-hmm. environment, and who's doing yeah. the controlling? You, Shanika. You. You're mm-hmm. doing the controlling. So you basically, you know, you took the po- you took his power away from him. Mm, and he showed you who is boss as yeah. soon as he got the opportunity. We, we come back, Dr. Dre. Hold on, hold on, Kyle. Hold on. I'm still not schooling Shanika, man. Oh, I'm my sorry. bad. My fault. My I'm fault. Sorry. Let me explain why the ghosting came, all right? Ooh, because here's the thing about it, man. She whipped it on him. He said he, 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 he loved her. He wanted to start a family with her. And probably when he went home, he realized, hey, look, she had these all these rules and mm-hmm. regulations Mm-hmm. For just to have sex, mm-hmm. if I begin a relationship with this woman and you know get serious and get married, how many rules is Ooh. she gonna set? How many tests is she gonna give me for the rest of my life while I be having to jump through hoops just to get some on mm. a regular basis with my wife? And mm. so, Shanika, man, I understand what you're doing, but I think you overthought this thing. Mm. Ooh, that's good. We come back. Dre's wife wants to know if he fathered any kids outside the marriage. And later in the show, Phil Collins' ex-wife gives her side of the story. Ooh, you're going to want to hear this. It's the MRA Podcast. Hey, guys, if you're digging the show, then please tell somebody. People might say something to you like, hey, man, you know what podcast you listening to? And that's when you say the MRA Podcast with Kyle and Kamal. Or the MRA Podcast with Kamal and Kyle. Dr. Dre's wife wants to know if he fathered any kids while they were married. Now, that's weird that she would be. She filed legal documents obtained by TMZ asking Dre to hand over any paperwork relating to any paternity actions he may have been involved in during their 24 year marriage. <laughs> Come on, why would she do that? She's working the refs. Yep. That's all she's doing. She's working the refs. She's putting it out there. She's accusing him of infidelity. Yep. Right? And, uh, yep. you know, uh, the previous statement she was making saying, like, she he bullied her in the signing this stuff. And, and she was, like, verbally abused in the signing this stuff. So all she's doing is working the refs. Mm. You know, if there is a prenuptial agreement and maybe infidelity is a part of it. You know, if if you know if you can prove that somebody was was unfaithful, she gets an extra you know two million mm-hmm. or something like that. Mm-hmm. And so now, by doing this, the onus is on. I mean, where her hope is the onus is on Dre to like come out and, and, and clear his name. You know, mm-hmm. now it'd be like I'm saying, hey Kyle, uh, you know, uh, when you stop beating your wife, like what? The, what are you talking what? about? Yeah. Yeah, now you don't put it out there, right? And so, and in the court case, they sometimes they'll throw some bullshit out there just for the jury to hear, working the refs, and they know the other the, the other uh, lawyer is going to say objection. Your oh, Honor. and the judge is going to be like, yeah, uh, you know, you know, sustained, like disregard yeah, that from the, the record. But the jury but heard they it. Still heard it. <laughs> <But> the <laughs> jury heard it. Heard it. And still so, yeah, I think Nicole Young is playing dirty right now, man. Mm. Um, now maybe Dre is playing dirty legally. Mm-hmm. But she's trying to get the court of public opinion on her side because a lot of these divorces, they do go to a jury. 
You know, yes. and so if this is if this goes to a jury, she's trying mm. to you know work the ref. She's trying to put it out oh, there yeah. that he's abusive. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's planning seeds. Right. He's he's got he's he's had he's had affairs on the side. Mm-hmm. I don't even I don't know if he's got kids. I don't know. Ask he's got, him. Right. He's got to prove that. And so mm. Dre is trying to just probably end the relationship, and she's trying to make this. Extremely hard. She's trying to become. Uh, she's trying to look sympathetic mm. to the jury, mm. and I don't know if it'll work or not. You know, obviously she doesn't have the capital to uh, hire the you know the best attorneys mm-hmm. uh, that Drake can hire, so she can't match him attorney for attorney. So maybe this is her way of like trying to even the playing field. I don't mm-hmm. know. I don't like it though. I don't like it either, but she, I mean, she is she is getting he's paying for the attorney, so he she can pick who she who she wants. I'm hoping I don't know, but I do know somebody's smart around here. They know what to do. Now, Kamal, remember on this show we talked about this. Dr. Dre has more access to the media than she does, so he's able to drive the narrative. And so, what she seems like she's doing is she every time she files a legal document, TMZ picks it up. Mm-hmm. So her way to get in TMZ is just by filing a legal document because it's public and then they get to see. And according to this one, she's asking for proof that he wants to know if you fathered any children. Here's the thing. One way to talk about it is, you know what? She's just throwing that out there. Another thing to say is she already knows. She already knows he got three babies out there. She just she didn't want to say it. So now the law is going to say it. She ain't said it. I ain't said nothing. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm just trying to get my ducks in a row. Hmm. She knows. I don't know, do Kyle. Think? I don't know. Because if she if she had proof, she would have put that out there a long time ago with all her other, you know, statements. Like, I've I bet been she with wonders, him. man. I've been with I him for she... 24 years and he uh-huh. fathered three kids. Uh-huh. I still stuck with, you know. I think she would have yeah. put it out there earlier. I think now she's fishing. I think she's fishing, and you know she might catch something. She um, might, yeah, she might catch something. She might not. Now, I will say this: if the court uh, starts digging and they find out that he has been paying some child support on the side, unbeknownst mm-hmm. to his wife, it mm-hmm. will uh, make Dre look bad in front of a jury Absolutely. and the judge. So maybe she's got a a, a feeling. Yeah, she definitely got a feeling. You know women. You or, know how women or are. Or maybe they, she's got some dirt on her. Maybe somebody is like, Yo, you really want to get the nigga. Uh, I heard he, you know, <laughs> he got a chicken hey. diamond bar or some shit like that. I don't know. <laughs> Speaking of dirt, Cabal, we come back. Phil Collins' wife gave her side of the story, and she is dumping dirt on my man. No pun intended. You'll see why. And later in the show, TMZ says, Tyson is scared of Holyfield. Ooh, we got to talk about that. It's the MRA Podcast. <laughs> Hey guys and gals, if you're enjoying the show, let someone know. Whatever app you're listening on, please subscribe, give us five stars, and leave a positive comment. And why wouldn't you give us five stars and a positive comment? We're great. Yes, we are. This helps our placement so that other people can enjoy the show as well. And why wouldn't they? We're great. Kamal Phil Collins, we talked about on the show, said his ex secretly got married. Mm. And then when he said, you got to go, she allegedly started threatening to release false and embarrassing accusations about him unless he renegotiated their 2008 divorce settlement. <laughs> well, she kept her into the bargain because she is now spreading the dirt, feels dirt. She says he turned into a hermit, didn't shower for over a year, stopped brushing his teeth, smelled horrible, lost his musical talent, as well as his ability to have sex. What does that got to do with the house? She's going to get to that part. She also says, he told her, this sounds so familiar, very Dr. Dre wife-esque. She t- he told her if she divorced her then husband, this is what he said back in the day, to get her back, relinquished her stake in their $20 million estate in Miami, then he would do her a solid and give her a 50% stake in the new crib. But now he's going back on his Word. I don't know if this word against yours is going to stand up in the court of law, Kamal, but I smell some bullshit, and it's not Phil Collins. Well, yeah, I was going to say, man, uh, he might have been a hermit uh, and didn't take a shower, lost all of his musical talents and all that shit, but I'm sure that man is a shrewd businessman. 
I'm yes, sure he, he didn't lose his shit and just basically started drawing up contracts without his lawyers taking a look at him first. Facts. So this is just, you know, some verbal agreement that she claims that Phil can easily dispute. Yep. Yeah, I don't like it. And I, I don't like the fact that uh lost his musical talents. That's a dig. That's yes, a dig. That's not even That's his thing. Come that's, out. that's not even doing dirt on Phil. That's that's ta- that's a that's a uh, uh, a dig to Phil. Mm. That's not telling. I never thought him. about that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Because brush that's like te- saying Kamal stop being funny or you lost your jump shot. Right. No. This is what I take pride in. Right, right, right. And so she's saying that that's for you, Phil. All other shit, mm. you know what I'm saying? Lives like a hummer, has a shower for over a year. That's giving up dirt. That's giving up game on the guy. But saying he mm. lost his musical talent and Phil was like, I've been in the studio all year composing. Yeah, that shit, it's, it, you lost it's it. It's not. You lost mm. it. Because here's the thing about it. Mm. We don't know he lost his musical talents, right? We just assume he ain't making music. Mm. And so it's not like he put some shit out and people were like, oh, we ain't feeling Phil's new shit. It's like, man, Phil, yeah. I just feel he was, he laid so much shit. Now he's enjoying the fruits of his labor. He's just been. As he should be. Yeah, he's just been chilling. But she's saying he lost his mm. talent. That means he's been trying. Mm. He's been trying, and you know he he lost his uh, he lost his uh, fastball. Is what she's saying. Uh, I don't like it, Kyle. I, I don't like it either, man. And I really don't like it because she said she was going to do it. She said, "If you don't renegotiate the terms of this divorce, meaning give me what I want, I'm going to embarrass you." But here's the and thing that's about exactly what she's doing. But Go here's ahead. the thing about it: if this is if this is it. I, I laugh. Oh, this is what if she has. I, I laugh. If I'm Phil, I'm laughing at this. I'm embarrassed if I'm Phil. You embarrassed? I don't want anybody to know I haven't showered in a year. But here's the thing about it. Again, this is her word against mine. This isn't like but he I got. Hasn't. Let's just pretend he hasn't. Let's just say he really had some emotional thing where, because she, what she's also doing is trying to explain away the fact. You know when y'all be doing this, ladies. Why, why, why she had to crazy. step out. Come on. Why she tricked this motherfucker and said, I'll be back. I'm going to a business meeting, came back married. What do you expect me to do? He was smelling horrible. He wasn't having sex with me anymore. Mm-hmm. You still did some slime shit. Buy a dog. Come buy a dog. <laughs> That's some slime shit, lady. Stop it. Be solid, man. Yeah, for better you know, or worse. Well, okay, this was worse. This was worse. What, what are we talking? I mean, the man is sick right now. Honestly, remember when John Edwards wife was sick remember how much vitriol he got Mm -hmm. because he stepped out on a sick woman Mm -hmm. you stepped out on a sick man he's clearly sick how else would you explain him not leaving the house and him being stank funk for over a year hey check this out man i'm not sure but i think that ozzy osbourne was like low-key depressed when uh Sharon Osborne like got him like the Oz Fest and like you know help turn his career help around. Turn his shit around because right. Sharon's solid. Right. That's my point, dog. Yeah, she, She's solid. She man. wasn't just sitting there complaining. You need to be doing something, you need to wheel yourself another job, like home chick from Dear Presidents. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Nah. <laughs> she was like, Oh, let me let me uh let me make a couple I know of calls. I don't snap my man out. <laughs> yeah, let me make a couple calls. I make make a couple calls, exactly. So man, ladies, you gotta do better. That's all I gotta say, man. You got to do better, man. When we come back, Mike Tyson, they say he's avoiding Evander Holyfield. It burns me up to even speak that disgraceful phrase. Me and Kamal are gonna talk about when we get back. It's the MRA podcast. <laughs> You listen to us, but Kamal and I want you to know that we listen to you, too. Even if we don't always respond to your tweets in a timely manner. I love how you say we, man. <laughs> so if you have some feedback, maybe you agree. Maybe you disagree. Or maybe you just want to tell us how much you love the show or that you want to testify about how we specifically helped you out. Or maybe you just want to tell Kamal how he was right or wrong. But mostly right. Whatever you want to tell us, hit us on our social. I'm at Kyle Irby. I'm at Angry Kamal. Hit us up and you just might hear your comment on the air. I promise. We'll be gentle. Come out. We all saw the videos of Mike Tyson boxing, training, and he's, I'm back. Looking to the camera with the sweaty face. Getting ready for Roy Jones Jr. They were supposed to fight early September. I think it was September 12th. For some reason, that didn't happen. Maybe you know why. I don't know. But once Tyson started training again, the rumor is that Evan Holyfield started saying, oh, wait a minute. Oh, Tyson getting back. Maybe I'm going to get back in it. And Holyfield started training as well. 
And now they say Ivana Holyfield wants a piece of Mike Tyson. But Mike Tyson don't want no parts, don't want no smoke with the real deal Holyfield. Kamal, this could be true, but the fan in me is in denial. I need you to be a man at all times and set me straight. What's the deal, dog? First of all, man, I don't like the fact that Evander's clout chasing. <laughs> That's what it feels like, like dog. Like, wait a second, man. Like, Roy and Tyson doing this. And he's like, I want some of this, too. That's a competitive. It's like, it's like, the cats, it's like them cats calling out people for, like, the, the versus battle. But it's the yeah. person who's always calling the, per, the other person out is always, always lower. He's always on the lower rung. Always lower. Right. Always lower. You know, yep. he's always on the lower rung. It's like, you know, some guy who went gold is always calling out somebody who went triple platinum. It's like, always, no, man. you need this. Yeah. You know, Evander is the one who's saying, I want this. How much they making? Wow. Yeah. I could make another four or five million dollars in his mind. Mm-hmm. Man, Tyson is light work. That's easy work. I get five yeah. million dollars to do what I always do. Smack him around, throw him around. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And uh, that's easy work. I, hey, I want some of this, too. And Mike is probably like, nah, man, get your own shit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And so I don't know. I don't think Mike is scared. I don't think Mike is scared, but it's like, nah, why why am I about to bless you? Because Have you ever had that rival though that you had a hard time beating? Like the like the like the New England Patriots have a hard time with them New York Giants, man. They just did in those Super Bowls. They had their number. You know what I'm talking about, Kamal? When you yeah. when you hoop it against somebody and their strengths just happen to match up with your weaknesses and you can't stand that such and such because you never could hit that fastball. Have you ever had that in your competitive life? Uh a couple well, at least you times. Know what I'm talking about. Yeah, a couple times. It was like this guy named uh, Mikey, and he was, he was in Rialto. It was like one of my homies' younger brothers. Mm-hmm. And uh, Mikey played basketball, but he didn't play for like a team or anything like that. He just, you know, he went to the park and, you know, yeah. and practice a lot. Uh-huh. But yeah, man, Mikey, you know, I'm thinking this guy's just some old cat off the street. But Mikey gave me fits. Mm. And it's like, dude, you don't even fucking play. <laughs> How, how aren't you falling for this move? I know that everybody uh, who falls for this move. Yeah, and why are you hitting that jumper where you should easily be clanking them? Like, how you, st- you? All right, you just hit the last three. There's no way you're gonna hit five <laughs> yeah. more in a row. You I'm not guarding yeah, that. You, you can't play. shoot. Yeah, I've <laughs> seen you. I'm not guarding that. Yeah. I know what you want to do. You want to drive, so you want me to come out there so you can blow by me. I'm not running out there because you're gonna miss this guy. He made it again. Right. Just, why? And yeah. every time we play, the same shit happens. Dude, it's like um, it's like the guy who knows he can beat somebody, who he thinks he can yes. beat somebody, is yes. always the one calling the person out, especially if that guy below him is bigger. It's like uh, Cool Mo D and LL. Yes. Like, damn near every album, Cool Mo D had a diss track. Dude, that's a perfect analogy. It's like, damn, dude, are you still talking shit? <laughs> Do you still... I mean, really? Do you? Because st- Kumo deals. Did you, you heard that shit? The diss with the lascivious, all those yeah. L's, L- lump. I mean, for the, L- loser, like whoa. right. And then, like three he years so later, smart, so three talented. years later, like right. LL might mention them in the song and stuff like that. Just mention them in the song, and uh, Kumo D's like, oh well, you shouldn't have did that. Another song. <laughs> I've been waiting for. I've been waiting for. It. Hopefully, this turns into a thing. It's, it's like, a perfect analogy, Kamal. Yeah. I it's think, a perfect analogy because he's jealous. Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, off. and it's just basically that's what Evander's doing, man. Evander should be sitting back enjoying retirement. Mike mm-hmm. felt, and a lot of people felt, that the end of his career didn't, the tail end of his career didn't go a, according Mike's to plan. Mike's. Okay. And so it was like, man, Mike didn't have that, that storybook ending the way he wanted it, you know, the, the way it should have been. And so he wants to go back and just, you know, correct some things. So does Evander. Let me tell you Evander's like this, Evander's already man. dominated this man twice. I know, but that's not the point, Kim. This is a part I think you're missing. You've said it, but I'm going to step in Evander's giant shoes. He knows in his mind he's a better boxer than Mike Tyson. I hate to say it. In his mind. Well, that particular uh, matchup. Yes. In his mind, he's better than Mike. So he watching, just like Kumo D and LL, he, Kumo D knows he got better lyrics than LL. He can't <laughs> understand it. <laughs> He's sitting at home with his 50 more? grand. You know what <laughs> I mean? While LL's sitting in 50 million, he can't fathom it. 
And then that little punk had the nerve to say something to me. I will eviscerate you, boy. You're not on my level, but you're not on his. It's got to bother Evander Holyfield to be, in his mind, a better boxer and know he could beat Mike to the point where Mike had to disqualify himself by biting the ear, allegedly. That's why he did it, allegedly. To see him always be the beloved Mike Tyson, nothing stops the guy. The guy goes to jail as a convicted rapist, gets out. He's like, oh, finally, they're going to hate him. No, no, no. The guy gets a cartoon. The guy's got a great podcast. He's yeah, making even Broadway, more money in the weekend. A week Broadway game. show. It's a Broadway show. <laughs> like, why? Hey, what? what about me, guys? I'm a Christian man who can fight. I'm the warrior. Y'all, why don't y'all love me like you love him? It's got to eat his ass up, Kamal. Yeah, he just want to like remind us one last time. Yes, one you more know what? time while y'all jocking this man you, that I'm better than him. Do you uh, is, you ever see that um, the NFL at 100 co- uh, commercial where all of those guys are at this, this dance or this, this dinner party? And, uh-huh. and it turns into like one big fucking football game. All these retired guys slamming each other and That's tackling. Hilarious. You ever seen it? No, but I get what you're saying. Oh my man. gosh, just you know, everybody's in there, man. Yeah, like Hall of Famers are like running yeah, with the yeah, ball getting yeah. tackled. And so Barry Sanders does a hell of a move. And mm. Emmett, he runs by Emmett Smith's table. And Emmett Smith was like, Woo, dang, Barry. And he looks at the other people at the table and says, Yeah, I know I have more yards than him, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, that is the perfect. <laughs> analogy when we come back man plenty of teams need a quarterback why has no one signed colin kaepernick and later in the show we have a dear Irby letter from a guy who's fallen in love with a woman who is below his standards what should he do kamal and i will coach him up is the mre podcast guys i have a comedy album it's called be a man at all times and it's on what's it on oh Spotify, iTunes, or wherever you stream your content. It's a damn good comedy album. I appreciate that, man. There's Stand Up on there. Kamal and I wrote a Who Done It mystery called The Case of the Missing Balls. That's on there. Based on the true story. Check out the album. Show your boys some support. And you can buy it on iTunes. Keyword buy it. Stop streaming. Kamal Jujabar, Colin Kaepernick at the, at, at the off season. After George Floyd, I think that's when. The NFL realized, okay, Cap, maybe you had a point with this police brutality thing. Maybe you, Kaepernick, maybe uh, maybe we did collude against you. You know, let's give you a little money. You know what? Let, let's admit that we were wrong. We were wrong. We're sorry, Cap. We're wrong. We, we You know, we, we're not going to say we colluded, but you're saying we colluded, and we're going to give you money and apologize. So we ain't saying we doing it, but you're saying we did it, and we're apologizing. So it kind of sounds like they did it. Mm-hmm. And more proof that they did it is the Dallas Cowboys need a quarterback badly. I think they're on their fourth guy. <laughs> and they ain't calling Cap. The 49ers, who their owner literally said, and I quote, he was on the Freakonomics radio, the, the hit inside of sports. He said, it's hard for me to see taking a knee. Like, if you can come up with a community or society where taking a knee is a disrespectful act, like, by all means, show me. I feel like he tried to modify his position to be as respectful as possible during a very sacrosanct moment during a professional football game. And I realized that the narrative, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, he sounded like he was down with Colin. But now his quarterback, Jimmy G, is out. I don't see him calling Colin. Come on, why is nobody called Colin Kaepernick? He's done. He's mm. done playing professional football, man. He's more of a symbol. Uh, mm-hmm. He sacrificed his career. I appreciate that. Um, he's a bigger man than me. But it's been too long. As a matter mm-hmm. of fact, that we're not even thinking about Colin Kaepernick anymore. I remember a couple of years ago, every time a quarterback went down, Cap's name came up. Yeah. Now we That was before, Kamal. Sorry to cut you off. That was before the apology. He was still public enemy number one. They didn't understand his point of view anymore. The, the, but now they get it. The pressure's off. No one's mm-hmm. really clamoring for Kaepernick anymore. I think that that ship has sailed. Um, mm. You know, I, I wish the guy well, but he's, what, 32, 33 years old? He hasn't played in, what, four seasons now? Mm. Um, and so I think that especially with, 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 with what a lot of these teams are trying to do, he would fit in the old mm-hmm. Kaepernick. 
But, you know, 32-year-old guy who's athletic and relies on his legs uh, is probably a step slower since the last time we've seen him. And, you know, a step slower, you know, these linebackers and these defensive linemen, they're actually faster. And Mm. so they're just doing the math, man. Mm. You know, Father Time's probably caught up with him. He's probably still better than a lot of backups. But, of course, however, here's the thing. Is it still worth it, though? Mm. Is it still worth bringing him in? Is he that much of an upgrade? Is he going to change our team's, uh, you know, our our future? Is he going to change the dynamic of the team? Is he going to improve the team that much where Mm. we can withstand the scrutiny? Because that's the thing about Mm. it. It's like it's the the risk. That's what it is. It's the risk reward. The scrutiny. Right. It's the risk reward. And it's like, man. The, the the risk outweighs the reward, I, I think, in Kaepernick's case. Mm, let me tell you something, dog. Tim Tebow, great quarterback, I thought, in college. Got to the pros. They were like, I don't know. A lot of Jesus talk. That's a distraction. The touchdown, the genuflect, does, is he a virgin? Is he not? Now, Russell Wilson, he's, he's, he's super Christian. But he's a league MVP. So when you have a distraction of anything, you better be a baller for people to get over it. Antonio Brown accused by two women of rape. He played last week because he's still at the top of his game. Right. Right. How about Michael Sam? He's not the only gay player in the NFL. He's the only gay player that tongued down his gay boyfriend at the draft and made it bigger than him his cause became bigger than him well Aaron, uh yeah michael sam is not in the league not because he's gay you know mm. if if khalil mack did the same thing or aaron donald that's did the, the point. same thing that's the point if 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 uh if patrick Mahomes kneeled you know yes and then kissed his boyfriend <laughs> He could, Patrick Mahomes could kneel, then tongue kiss the guy that he just ran over. And be accused of rape. <laughs> and then go after the party and have three women accuse him. As long as he was able to throw an 80-yard strike to Tyreek Hill on Sunday, he'd Man, be in the league. They make an excuse for him. Mm-hmm. That's deep as a mug, ain't it? Yeah, I mean, really, Ben Kaepernick, Kaepernick didn't do him any favors that last year in San Francisco when they lost all those games. So now they have a they have a genuine excuse. And then yeah. when they saw him in the workout, he was all right. It's cool. He can play. Yeah, he didn't run, though. And I think that basically that one was the – that sealed it for a lot of people. Like, he didn't run. If we're mm. signing Kaepernick, we're getting a – we want a mobile quarterback. We, we get, want a 4-4, four, four, yeah. bro. Can you do a 4-5? Yeah. Is there a reason why you're not running? <laughs> yeah. If you're still – if you can still do that, you got action. But if you just want to show you us – show me a 4-3, we'll have you on the game this Sunday. Right. Show me a 4-3. Right. Like as the old Madden game used to say, speed kills. Speed kills, man. And we come back, man, we have a Dear Irby letter from a guy who's fallen in love with a woman who is below his standards. What should he do? Kamal and I will coach him up. It's the MRA Podcast. Hey, guys, what's up? If you're enjoying this show, do us a favor and donate to our Patreon. Word. Just go to www.patreon.com. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com and make a donation to the MRA Podcast of Kyle and Kamal. Word. It's that simple. Listen to the show, love the show, share the show, break the show off with some dough. Pars. Let's get in this Dear Irby letter. Let us. Dear Irby, I have not had much luck in love in the last few years. My wife broke my heart when she cheated on me and left with a guy I have always hated. Oof. Oh, <laughs> God. God. Dang. We talked earlier about double the whammy. guy that you couldn't beat, about This is the guy he couldn't beat. And then he took mm. his girl. Oh, man. That God. dude deserves the worst, man. So this is basically, <laughs> this is uh, Mike Tyson taking the Avengers chin. <laughs> that's it, man. That's it. LL Cool J smashing Cool Mo D's wife, bro. <laughs> Ooh. I decided I was done with the romance, but my cousin said I should join eHarmony. I didn't like it at first. I had to jump through a lot of hoops, but eventually I matched with a woman who's making me want to give love another shot. I don't know if I've ever met someone so kind and loving. 
not just to me, but to everyone. She's a giver, and my ex-wife was a taker. This new woman always looks for the good in people and always has a positive demeanor about herself. The problem is she's a little bigger than most women I go for. My wife was a 10, but this woman is cute in the face. But overall, she's a 7 on a good day. What should I do? I really like this woman, but I'm wondering if I'm wasting my time by lowering my standards. I'm thinking I should cut it off now before we get in too deep. What do you guys think? Greg in Alexandria. I think that's in Louisiana. Kamau. What'd you think, dog? There's a saying in uh, business, sports, entertainment, Mm -hmm. whatever. You're worth whatever somebody pays you. Mm. Okay. Okay. You got a seven. That's what you got, man. What? That's what you got, man. You and, and you appreciate this seven. Mm. You're saying all these positive things, but she's not the looker that you're that you're used to. Hey, man, maybe those days are over for you. Ouch. Des Bryant is used to being the number one receiver, Damn. the diva receiver. Mm. That man signed a a practice squad contract. Mm. What was he supposed to say? I like this team, man. I like everything about it. I like the facilities, I like the great guys and stuff like that. Much better than I've ever mm. than the college boys. They seem loyal, but man, they don't they don't treat me like a the number one ex receiver the way I'm used to. Mm. I, I think I'm gonna go try to find another. T- no, mm. he signed that contract. Listen, man, you like this girl. Mm-hmm. You, I mean, you have a litany of positives, and the only negative was the shallow shit. Yeah. It's the only negative. Listen, I'm going to say this, man. I'm not going to say settle because I don't even think you're settling. This is what you have. This is what, you know, the gods have, have brought you. This is what nature, ha- ha- you know, this is this is what it is. And honestly, man, I think you'd be unwise if you would be like, nah, I'm going to keep looking until I find what I'm used to. Mm. I, that might not ever come to fruition. Mm. If she makes you happy, she's kind. She looks for the good in people. I mean, the polar opposite of your wife who broke your heart. Mm. This is a blessing in disguise. You know, you don't like the package, but inside that package is your blessing. Mm. This is what you probably always needed. And who knows, man, you said she's a little bigger than most women you go for. You know, you guys can start walking together. You know, she might, you know, if you guys want to get serious, she might, you know, want to look dynamite in a wedding dress. Whatever. I would not pass up this chance to be happy Mm. because you're looking for something you think you want but made you miserable. Mm. Come on, Greg. Come on, Greg. Don't blow this. We come back, I'm away in. Yo, what's up? I'm Kyle. And I'm Kamal. And you're listening to the MRA Podcast, where men come to talk and women come to eavesdrop. Kamal, you did it again. (laughs) That was a great insight, man. You said stuff I wouldn't even think about it, man. Mm. You told Greg that you're not going to tell him to settle. I will. (laughs) You better settle. I'm going to talk to you, Greg, like I would talk to these women. I hate it, ladies, when you or your friends say, you deserve better. No, you don't. You actually don't. Come out, I was genius. You deserve what you can get, buddy. I'm sorry. I thought Greg started his letter by saying, I have not had much luck in love for the past few years. Yeah. That means after your wife left, you had no options. Been striking out. <laughs> Strike. Let me tell you something, dog. Here's my concern. You're going to get with this woman and use this woman to get your swagger back. And then the 10 going to come and you're going to drop her for some stupid ass 10. <laughs> you're an idiot. Greg, you got to work on you. You need to work on you. 
because you're the problem. My biggest fear is that you're going to be miserable with a great woman. And that's because of you and your stuff. Ah, man, she got a gut. Yeah. Okay. You got to decide what you can work with. Some shit you just can't work with. Everybody has a thing that they can work with. Come out. I can work with thick. You know, I could work with white, black, Mexican. There's certain things I just can't do, though. Yeah, I can't. I can't. I can't work with stuck up. I can't do stuck up. I mm. can't do super skinny like oh. bones. Can't do it. I don't care how nice you are. Can't do it. Everybody has their limitations. Come out. You better know yours. If you cannot deal with the chubby girl, don't do it. Wait for this. There, there might be another one. Maybe not as dope, but don't use this woman. If you know you can't do it, try it. But if you know you can't handle the looks, the giggles, the thoughts, don't do it, bro. It's not. It's, it's especially don't do it. If just don't don't be that guy, man. You have to be willing to deal with the negative for this blessing, because every blessing comes with the negative. Here's the thing, Kyle. Help I don't me, know if me. it's. A, I don't even know if it's a negative. He says she's a little bigger, unless he's just being nice. He's being he says, nice. He says she's super cute. Uh, woman cute in the face. Seven on a good day, Kamal. He's used to a ten. She's seven on a good day. What is she on I a bad day? I don't know if I trust his rating system. It's his. Who gives a shit? It's his. <laughs> I don't if know if I trust. Seven him. on a good day means what on a bad day, Kamal? Six, five. He likes tens. Yeah. I I'm just being honest, dog. What what does it mean? Yeah, and I guess that's just for ego. What do you because, mean? Because well, if if he's with a ten, his wife is a ten and he's searching for a ten and she mistreated him, he's basically willing to take the abuse for the ten. B- for ego because he's the guy who's got the ten. You know, or and, he and, just and, likes the way they look and he can only you know what I mean? Like I can't <clears throat> Like certain thing I can't do. Like uh, I like I like I like teeth. You know what I mean? I don't think I could do. I can't. I can't do rough teeth. I can't do it. You know what I mean? I can't. I can't do it, man. There's well, certain. Go ahead. Well, yeah, I would say that that there has to be some physical attraction, and I'm yes. and my thing is I'm assuming mm-hmm. there is a physical attraction between Greg and this girl. You know, that's that, that's my point. There's a physical attraction, I'm assuming, but mm-hmm. it's just not where he wants it to be. You know, I could like a Hyundai, but it's like, I like the way it looks, but it's a Hyundai. I just don't know if I, mm-hmm. but I like the way it looks. I like the way it drives. Yeah. I, I like everything about it, but it's not Still what I'm. Still Hyundai. When we were growing up, Hondas were pieces of trash. Right. And so I wonder, is he treating her like a Hyundai? He, he likes He likes it. It's, it's still a Hyundai to him. Right. And so she's a little bit bigger than I'm used to. I get along with her. Everything is good. However. All right, guys. Now it's time for the lesson of the day. You think he needs to settle? <laughs> you need to settle, man. I'm so, I swear to you, man. People, listen to me. Y'all better learn to settle. Because that's the key to happiness. Right, and here's the thing about it, man. This might be his gift from God. It I is a you, gift. I it sent is. you this perfect woman. <laughs> yes. You're perfect for you. Yes, yes. You better get over that shit. Now, like I said, I like me, so it doesn't bother me. I don't see it as a problem. Now, th- there, there is a line. You know what I mean? There's a line where it's just disgusting to me. But as long as she wasn't disgusting with me, I can entertain it. I like me. Yeah, I mean, you know, I yeah, I I I'm the same way. And so I hopefully just, he has to like meat, because if he don't like meat, he might be wasting his time. Because we don't want him cringing, you know what I mean? Just because she's nice to him, because that's using. If yeah. you can find enough things that you can tolerate, my dude, and I know it doesn't sound romantic to say tolerate, but if you can find enough things to you can tolerate, please don't mess this up, dog. Because she, go ahead. Yeah. No, 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 you're not getting the next one. Tomorrow ain't going to be like that. These are they're diamonds in the rough, man. You better know how to spot. Your your wife always tells me that. Like, boy, you know how to pick them. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, man, how do you? Because <laughs> I, I know what to look for. 
Have you heard her say that to me before? Yeah. Yeah, it's like, I know what to look for. And Greg, if I was Greg, man, this would be no conversation. You need some advice in your relationship. And can't afford a therapist? Yeah. Hit us up and we'll get you through this. We won't even charge you a copay. Exactly. The Dear Irby Letter is our longest standing segment on the MRA, dating all the way back to the webisodes. This is where we truly save relationships one listener at a time. We've saved marriages. Encourage divorce. Taught a guy how to please his woman. Encourage divorce. Yeah. So hit us up for advice and we'll help you out. Send your emails to Dear Irby at the MRA Podcast.com. That is Dear Irby at the MRA MRAPodcast.com. Where can we find you? Twitter and Instagram at AU Kamel. I'm at Kyle Irby, K Y L E E R B Y, at the MRA Podcast, where you can find us both. KyleIrby.com. Rick, you see some of my commercials. Uh, I'm starting to see the series of commercials that I shot. I haven't seen mine yet, but that's always a good sign. Now, you hope that they show yours too, but at least the series is starting to be shown. So that's good. I just saw that today. Uh, the MRAPodcast.com is where you can see all 118 episodes that we have done. Come out. Thank you for bringing it, ladies. We love you, fellas. Be a man at all times. Deuces. MRA. Hey.